Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Davids with Menorini Silicone Biosystems, and I'd like to talk to you today about EPCAM Low CT6 success with Cell Search. As a general disclosure, the Cell Search system is cleared by the FDA for counting CTCs from peripheral blood in metastatic breast, prostate, and colorectal cancer. Unless specifically stated otherwise, everything here is for research use only and not for use in diagnostic procedures. Today I'd like to generally cover what is EPCAM and what are EPCAM low cells, how does our ferrofluid enable the capture of EPCAM low cells, and what data we have about cell search and EPCAM low and EMT. So what is EPCAM? Originally defined as the epithelial cell adhesion molecule, recent research has indicated that this might be better called the epithelial cell activating molecule. There was a recent publication looking at EPCAM signaling promoting tumor progression and protein stability of PDL1 through the EGFR pathway, which underscores the two primary roles of EPCAM cell proliferation enhanced cell signaling and cell to cell adhesion. In healthy cells, EPCAM is involved in cell signaling, migration, proliferation, and differentiation. However, in tumor cells, EPCAM appears to be involved in tumorigenesis and metastasis of carcinomas. In this paper, they found that EPCAM mediated PDL1 stabilization gives rise to escape from immune surveillance. So we understand that EMT, or the epithelial to mesenchymal transition, is a fluid and reversible process, and the inverse is known as the mesenchymal to epithelial transition. The previous paradigm for CTCs that was that when cells would escape from the primary tumor and emerge into circulation, that they had undergone a transition to a mesenchymal-like state. As you can see on this kind of complex slide here, the cells that were in the tumor were more pink-like and the mesenchymal cells are more green-like. You can also see that there's a gradient of cell types in between and gene expression changes from the epithelial-like to the mesenchymal-like cells. Like most things in biology, it's not as simple as that. There's been a lot of emerging research that understands EPCAM is a gradient of expression. So EPCAM may be highly expressed in epithelial cells and lowly expressed in mesenchymal cells, but it's still present. So I wanted to highlight this paper from 2020, Epithelial Cell Adhesion Molecule, an anchor to isolate clinically relevant circulating tumor cells. And they basically indicate that EPCAM itself may not be completely lost during the epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And the clinical detection of metastasis competent CTCs may not be limited by EMT at least not in cancer subtypes where EPCAM expression is strongly associated with cancer progression. And as we discussed earlier, it's possible that EPCAM is actually driving or more closely associated with tumors that are undergoing metastasis, whether these are metastatic initiator cells or cancer stem cells. The paper goes on to have this wonderful figure and says that detecting EPCAM positive CTCs with the cell search system is important because their presence is always correlated with the clinical outcome. And with anything with circulating tumor cells, we're looking to really understand what's happening in the patient. And if it's not clinically relevant, then it perhaps is not that relevant to our research. Um, clinical utility and clinical validity are really key here. And we know that CTC analysis has been proposed for everything from evaluating metastatic relapse, minimal residual disease, monitoring of treatment during treatment, and identifying resistance targets, and developing perhaps new drugs. So now the paradigm for CTCs and understanding EMT to MET and what is EPCAM positive within these CTCs has really changed. So if we look back at the same slide as before, the emerging paradigm for CTCs is now circulating tumor cells may exist in that milieu of intermediary states within the cells. Now I'd like to address ferrofluid. The cell search platform uses a ferrofluid that amplifies capture of cells for enrichment and isolation. Cell search itself has a variety of kits and we use different ferrofluids to target different chemistries, and different cell types that are desired. When we use these different markers in conjunction with our ferrofluids, we can more closely define a population of cells and understand how they contribute to a phenotype. The ferrofluid itself is an iron nanoparticle with a polymer layer. We then conjugate an anti-EPCAM antibody and a biotin analog to create this kind of snowflake shape seen on the right. When an anti-EPCAM ferrofluid is introduced to a cell suspension, whole blood, cerebral spinal fluid, etc. 
the ferrofluid will bind to any EPCAM present on those circulating tumor cells or other cells that are EPCAM positive. Now, streptavidin is introduced and it will bind to the biotin analog on the ferrofluid. Additional molecules of our ferrofluid will bind to these molecules and amplify the nanoparticle shell. So in effect, this takes a cell that maybe has a relatively low or rare amount of an antigen, in this case EPCAM, and creates a large shell, kind of like the casing of a golf ball, around the outside. We can then use this to magnetically isolate these cells and wash off contaminating cells, leaving us with a relatively pure specimen. We then are able to stain the cells that are left behind and differentiate circulating tumor cells from possibly contaminating leukocytes. In this circulating tumor cell kit, we use an anti-EPCAM ferrofluid with an anti-cytokeratin PE conjugated antibody. And for leukocytes, we are looking at anti-CD45 to use as an exclusion marker. So what is EPCAM low? It's discussed a lot, and what does it really mean clinically? So I want to start instead with understanding EPCAM expression in patient samples. So on this slide, we're going to talk about data from a 2005 paper that compared immunohistochemistry to flow cytometry to better understand what is the relative number and average and mean of EPCAM molecules per cell. So here they looked at breast cancer cell lines, colon cancer, two prostate cancers, and a bladder cancer cell line, and found that EPCAM expression is approximately 10 times higher in the tissues as than it is in the CTCs. So when they looked and compared um, with immunohistochemistry, about 97% of solid tumors had detectable EPCAM, with 72% of those tissues showing antigen expression levels of greater than 400,000 EPCAM molecules per cell. And this is the foundational data that cell search was designed off of. They anticipated the question of what about EPCAM negative cells. In this figure here, which is quite small in the video and is quite detailed, they looked at 2,600 CTCs and were comparing positivity for EPCAM or positivity for either cytokeratin 8 or 18 or cytokeratin 19 or MUC1. Of the 2,600 CTCs identified, EPCAM was present on all except for four of those CTCs, which were identified by either cytokeratin 19 expression alone, which accounted for two, or MUC1 expression alone. Understandably, though, there have been continued concerns with EPCAM positive enrichment. In a recent paper here, the authors say the ability to detect and enumerate EPCAM low or negative cells are vital because they could better facilitate better predictions on cancer stages, patient prognosis, as well as designing the ideal therapeutic strategy and management of the patient's care. However, it's unclear what the clinical significance of EPCAM low CTCs really is. This is a paper from 2019 entitled EPCAM Low Circulating Tumor Cells Gold in the Waste. And they summarized three studies that were carried out to address how many CTCs showed low or no EPCAM expression that are discarded during cell search isolation and whether the presence of those cells was associated with a clinical outcome. And I'll show you a figure from one of those on the next slide. But in summary, the paper said, in all of these studies, a significant difference was observed for the presence of greater than five EPCAM high CTCs in relation to overall survival, whereas there was no significant difference for greater than five EPCAM low CTCs, demonstrating there's a strong correlation with survival that can be contributed to EPCAM high CTCs alone. And these studies looked at non-small cell lung carcinomas, castrate-resistant prostate cancer, and metastatic breast cancer. So it covered a good variety of diseases. On this slide, we look at a paper from DeWitt et al., the detection of EPCAM positive and EPCAM negative circulating tumor cells, and they show a diagram here of the autoprep system that does the immunomagnetic isolation, and they interrupted our normal wasting process. In doing so, they were able to address the question of whether these EPCAM low or EPCAM negative cells that are excluded by cell search have any clinical relevance or a difference between the detected cells and the cell search defined CTCs. In this figure here, figure three, they show overall survival score on the left for CTCs found after cell search. So these would be CTCs that are EPCAM low or EPCAM negative. 
and using a definition of greater than one CTC or zero CTC, there was no significant relationship between the presence of those cells and overall survival. And then if you look at D, the overall survival for all CTCs using zero and one, using a pan CT kit where they looked at more cytokeratins to be more inclusive of CTCs and not just the cell search definitions. They also found no relationship between overall survival and all classes of CTC detected. So EPCAM positive enrichment does have a number of strengths. It is the gold standard for clinically useful CTCs. It can capture cells undergoing EMT if they're not fully converted to mesenchymal cells, and I'll show you a figure next. And it is representative of the tumor environment, allows for the heterogeneity of what we know are chaotic biological processes with a number of intermediary cell types. Here I want to show you a diagram of cell search cells that meet the classical definition, but also express beta-catenin here in the fourth channel. And those are cells that are undergoing the mesenchymal transition. So in this figure, we show that we can capture EPCAM low cells or arguably EPCAM cells that are undergoing EMT. In summary, we are uncertain of the clinical impact of EPCAM low and negative cells. Small CTCs, which we've talked about in other coffee chats, may be missed by label-free enrichment, but are included with EPCAM positive enrichment, as in cell search. And we know that CTCs themselves are likely to exist in the middle of the EMT or MET spectrum and express a mere variable amounts of EPCAM enabling enrichment by cell search. If you're trying to understand if your EPCAM low cells can be detected by cell search and or their EMT markers are present, we have a fourth channel that can be utilized to study the presence of that marker. And we believe that in many situations, EPCAM low cells that are still EPCAM positive can be detected by cell search. We also have the ability to use cell search ferrofluid on our new device, the cell mag. And if you have questions about manual enrichment via cell search or cell mag, we would be happy to answer those for you. Thank you so much for your attention and have a great day.